Hello glue sniffers. This scene has been sitting on the shelf for far too much time. Every step of the building is covered in the videos on my channel. So, if you miss them, be sure to check them out. Today we will paint it and make it ready for weathering. So, we will be airbrushing acrylics, brushing acrylics and playing with sand in order to achieve this. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's get started. Before we can proceed to painting, we must cover the edges with some wood to make them look nicer. I chose 1mm balsa for this task, but balsa planks are just 10 cm wide so we must glue them together to obtain larger pieces. For gluing I choose a combination of double-sided adhesive tape and PVA. First the tape and then some PVA where there is no tape. Now we can put on the balsa cover. The piece is bigger than needed. When everything was dry I cut away the excess balsa. And then it was time to hide the edge. Next time, I should put on the wood planks before I do the terrain. Lesson learned. I used repair stucco and PVA where there were plaster pieces. And here is the scene after the planking process. Everything was covered with black primer. I had run out of mine, so Pippo, a club colleague, gave me this old bottle. There was only one finger left inside and I was a bit worried if it would be enough. I thinned it with Amo Acrylic Thinner and it worked brilliantly. Perfect spraying and covering. I did some pre-lightening with white paint, just to make some difference at the start. But as it turned out, this step was totally unnecessary. So, you can skip that. I decided to take the grass out of the game. I started with a yellowish tone. All the airbrush colors in this episode are from the Amo by Mick range. They were tinted with their acrylic thinner and working with them was a pleasure. The next step is a darker green overall coat. And in the end a more vivid one just for highlights. If you like what you see be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Thank you! It was the first time that I was airbrushing static grass, and it wasn't so bad. The overspray will be corrected later. For the dirt I choose Dunkel Brown. Be sure to spray at low pressure and try to avoid hitting the grass. And it's not so hard as it seems. Then I took the earth brown color. It says earth on the bottle, it should be ok, right? wrong. This color doesn't belong in the forest at all. Who knows, maybe for a Vietnam War scenario? I will change it back to Dunkel Brown later, so don't do it. Let's move to the stones. I started with an overall coat of stone grey. Again, it says stone on the bottle, so wrong again. It was far too light. I gave a look at Uncle Nice Shift's video about painting stones and I decided to go that way. Time to clean the airbrush and put it in the drawer. It is brush time from now on. I also switched to Valeo paints. There is nothing wrong with ammo, but I don't have all the colors I needed. For the base coat I mixed neutral grey and old wood. A little more old wood maybe. And here is the thing. It is logical that all the artificial stone elements were made from the mountain rocks. So, all of them should look similar. I can imagine the Führer saying something like I want Carrara marble for the cobblestone in the mountain. And the engineer, jawohl my Führer, Hans, take the rocks from the mountain, we will say that it's Carrara marble. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, now some variation. These are the colors that we will be using. I took a wet palette, but in the end a stiff well palette was better. You should prepare some heavy washes of all the colors. 
we will start with the retaining wall. You pick one stone and you apply a heavy wash of color all over it. In this case, old wood is used. Immediately after this, while it's still wet, you apply a few dots of white paint here and there. And you blend both colors with a wet brush. Second color is neutral grey. Same procedure. Overall wash, few dots of white and blending. The white color should be a little more dense than the washes. Light matte is the next one. And here you can see that this wet on wet approach is very useful. Different colors provide diversity and white is the common key that links them all. We can say that the differences are strong, but don't worry, the sand will turn that down. I left the original color on a few stones. Just wet them with water and apply the white paint. The blending goes as usual. I did the cobblestone in the same way, but at the end I sprayed everything with tension breaker, which is isopropanol mixed with water. Then I applied the white paint in random dots. The blending was done with a large brush. And now the rocks. Hmm. The retaining wall and the cobblestone, okay separate pieces, everyone gets a different tone and we are done. But now we must put all of those tones on the rocky wall. As we say in our region, where the bull has gone, the rope should go too. And I jumped into it. First I wetted the whole surface. And then I slept on all the tones. At the end white was applied. And wet brush was used for blending. Maybe it doesn't look good now, but it works. I used the same approach on the fence stones. Hey, I will take some time to welcome a new Patreon. Welcome Jean-Patrick, who has joined the team. If you like what I'm doing, you can check out my Patreon page. You will get a lot of stuff for a small amount of money. And you will help me on my journey. I will become your personal tutor for modeling stuff and you will get extra content almost every day. Not bad, huh? Also, thanks to all of my previous Patreons. As I promised, I changed the earth tone back to Dunkle Brown. With the basic color of the stones done, it was time for some shadows in order to add some contrast. I started with the dark brown color wash. As I said, a stiff well palette is better for those big scenario applications. And here comes another magic trick. My terrain guru Ravko came in for a coffee and he suggested I try this. First, you wet the surface well. The dark brown wash was applied to all the crevices. And then you shoot it again with the tension breaker. It will flow naturally because of the gravity and you will end up with a stunning effect. Yes, science! For the next step I added a lot of black to the dark brown wash. Try not to use pure black. The approach was the same. But now we must concentrate only on the deepest spots. It's time to play with sand. I applied some on the retaining wall. Take a soft brush and take your time pushing it around to fill all the holes. Then I took some VMS sand and ballast freeze and drop by drop I fixed everything. Then you should take another brush and some water and take away the glue accumulations. If you don't do it, those accumulations will result in glossy spots. Okay. There is flat varnish to fix that, but you can resolve this without it. The same approach was used upstairs. You can already see how the color of the different pieces is fading away. As I was here, I applied some loose material to the street edges. It is a mixture of different gravel, some sand and bits of seaball. It gives some textures to the scene. This time I first wetted the surface with tension breaker. 
this should help the glue flow even better. And here comes the glue. It is hard to hit every single spot, but you can redo those spots later. The last painting step was the wooden fence. I started with a thin coat of old wood. I was able to obtain a nice texture on the wood, so it will be a shame to cover all of that. Then a wash of burnt umber was applied. This time I mixed the paint with paint drying retarder. This darker color should flow into all the veins of the wood. And with this the painting stage is done. So here we are now. Conclusions. First of all, don't be afraid to try something new. Who says that acrylics are difficult to blend? Nonsense. Wet on wet is a fantastic approach. As you can see everything is basically grey here, but we were able to obtain variation. I'm very happy about how this turned out. In the next one we will do some weathering and finish this scene. I think that you noticed that I had a hard time filming such a big piece. Well, I have some new ideas for the next one and hopefully I will be able to deliver better footage. Please tell me what you think in the comments. Until the next one, be cool, be healthy and keep modeling. See you soon. Bye.